Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here, and today with the topic of the discrete time filters. Fine. We've already seen the topic of filtering in the continuous time case in a detail. Today we apply the same concept to the discrete time case. Fine. But uh, you know we come through a proper channel first of all. And what was that proper channel? We considered the Fourier tool and the LTI system. So what do we have? If we have a, we have an input x of t, and and it's and it's applied to an LTI system having some impulse response h of n, so it would give you an output y of n. Wasn't it like this? It was, where the output would be the convolution of the input and the impulse response. To be more specific, in this case, if the input is a complex exponential signal, that is exponential of j omega n, we have the, 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 the what? The eigenvalue property that the output would be the same input multiplied with some scaling factor. And the scaling factor is, of course, we know the frequency response of the system. And this is it. Isn't it like this? It is. That is, we know very well. The, where the frequency response, we know again, is the what? Where? where this frequency response h e of j omega is equal to the summation n running from a negative infinity to positive infinity h of n exponential of negative j omega n, which means the frequency response is the discrete time Fourier transform of the impulse response and we know that very well again. Isn't it like this? It is eigenvalue. Frequency response is the Fourier transform of the impulse response if you want me to write it over here. So this is basically the eigenvalue, right? The eigenvalue. What is the eigenvalue? The frequency response. And what is it? Is the discrete time Fourier transform of impulse response of any LTI system okay of any general LTI system so what have we learned again another important point we know that the discrete time Fourier transform is periodic so what do we have for a, so, so which means that this is a, this, this frequency response is also uh, period is also is also discrete and Fourier transform so this would also be periodic right so we have learned again that that for a continuous time LTI system frequency response is a periodic right uh, so let me write for a continuous time LTI system the frequency response is a periodic why because over here we have the continuous time uh, we have over there the continuous time Fourier transform and we know the continuous time Fourier transform is not periodic. Whereas for a discrete time LTI system, for a discrete time LTI system, the frequency response is periodic. And why? So we know that very well that the frequency response is the discrete time Fourier transform and we know that the discrete time Fourier transform is periodic with a period 2 pi and that is it. So that was the general background we needed to develop for the concept of filtering as we did in the continuous time case. Now why we need filtering? So filtering is applied then now in some cases we need to uh, we need to get rid of some components. So there are frequency selective filters. You, you let some of the components go and you block the others. Fine. Similarly, uh, you block some of the components, you get the rest of all passed. So that is another type of filter. Or you could also say you can change the relative amplitudes of the frequency components. And those were the frequency shaping filters. Now again I tell you in this video that the topic of filtering is not included in this course in a detail. It's just a simple touch. The next semester course, the digital signal processing, the filter, it revolves around the topic of filtering. And let me tell you one thing as well, there's a, a difference between the topic of filtering and sampling, okay? Sampling is not included in this course. Sampling is included in the topic of, in the course of communication systems. So we'll cover that one day, inshallah, in that course. Anyways, 
So filtering. So what do we have? Uh, if we if we talk about the basic, if we talk about the basic uh, uh, filters. So so what were they? So you know them very well. They could be a high pass filter, a low pass filter, or a band pass or a band stop filter. So first, you know, let me draw. If this is my omega axis, and if this is my, uh, air, the, so we, we we show the behavior of the frequency, uh, we show the behavior of the filter through the magnitude of the frequency response, right? So if this is, if this is sort of a frequency response, you know this is a cutoff frequency, right? Similarly over here it would now repeat at omega is equal to two pi. And similarly at 4 pi and again similarly it would repeat over here at a negative 2 pi and then it would repeat over the other side as well so can you not see what sort of a filter is this so this is passing the frequencies that are near to 0 or they are equal to a 2 pi so which means that this is a low pass filter this is a low pass filter and how do I say this so we know this very well from the basics that the frequencies near 0 and 2 pi are low frequencies and the frequencies near pi and, uh, uh, and, uh, and odd multiples are high frequencies so if I write the frequencies near 0 2 pi and similarly even multiples of pi are low frequencies and frequencies near pi minus of pi similarly over here minus of pi odd multiples so here we have even multiples here we have odd multiples are higher frequencies and this we know from the basic videos in the beginning of the course we have already covered this so this based on this phenomena this point this is a low pass filter and i've shown this periodicity because it's discrete time Fourier transform and it is periodic similarly if you have the next if this is your omega axis this is the frequency response magnitude okay the magnitude i'm trying so now what would be the case zero is over here over here you have a pi so it would be passing frequencies near a pi similarly near a negative pi similarly at a 3 pi and this repeats similarly over here at a negative 3 pi and it repeats so have a look it's passing the frequencies that are near the higher frequencies and it's attenuating the frequencies that are near the lower frequencies that is 0 and 2 pi so which means what this is a high pass filter behavior and again this the discrete nature this is a periodic one fine similarly similarly if you have the other two if you have the other two if this is the omega axis this is the magnitude of h of g omega what would we have this uh, is passing a band so it's passing a band over here if this if it has passed this band so similarly at this side it would have passed this band and similarly now it would pass after an interval of 2 pi this will pass after an interval of 2 pi at this side as well so this is what this is a band pass filter it's passing a specific band this is the original band that it has passed right and this one now this one now is due to the periodicity of it fine so this is your band pass filtering the final can you draw it yourself or if i draw it this is my omega axis this is the magnitude of h of g omega so the opposite to this if it has passed this band so over there it would stop this band if it has stopped it over here so have a look it has stopped it over this side as well now it would repeat after a 2 pi interval which is like this so this would repeat over here it would stop it after a 2 pi interval similarly it would stop it again after a 4 pi interval and this would repeat over here so have a look this is rejecting a particular band of frequencies letting all the others go this is a particular band stop filter the band stop the band pass they are uh, commonly they are combinedly known as a notch 
felt it. Is that fine till here? Now, uh, what if I say if I need a filter in a mathematical representation? This we have shown the basics. What if I need a mathematical form of a filter? So we generally define them through a uh, through a difference difference equation. So let me write an example based on that. Now excuse this line, okay? This my little cousin, uh, you know, he wanted to write something on the board, and well, what? He ended up writing it with a permanent marker. So I'll try to remove this in the next videos, but anyway, it's not disturbing us. So if uh, uh, an LTI system is given, you have an input applied to an LTI system, and you have the output y of n. Now the input output relationship is given as y of n is equal to 1 upon 2x of n plus x of n minus 1. And the question is what sort of a filter is it? What sort of a filter is it? So what type of filter or what sort of filter or whatever what is this so how do we tell it I told you we need to tell if we need to tell the the type of the filter so we need we, we tell it on the basis of what we, we tell it on the basis of the frequency response h of g mag of the signal and how do we know the h of g mag of the signal? We take the discrete time Fourier transform of the impulse response of the system. Now how do we know the impulse response of the system? So the impulse response is the response of an LTI system when the input to the system is a an impulse. So the impulse response h of n this would be equal to 1 upon 2 delta of n plus uh, plus delta of n minus 1 isn't it like this it is and now what do you do now you can find the Fourier transform right now h of g omega so this would be equal to the summation n is running from a negative infinity to positive infinity if I take the 1 over 2 outside common right you have a delta of n multiplied with an exponential of negative j omega n plus I give the summation to the other signal as well negative infinity to positive infinity a delta of n minus 1 exponential of negative j omega n isn't it like this 1 over 2 is common now we know from the shifting property you have an integration you have an impulse multiplied with some signal what do you get you get the other signal at the value at which this this is located so what would I have so I would write over here fine that my impulse that my Fourier transform this is equal to 1 upon 2 for this you would have exponential of negative j omega into 0 or let me write a stepwise exponential of negative j omega n at n equal to 0 why at n equal to 0 because the impulse is located at n equal to 0 similarly you have a plus then you have an exponential of negative j omega n again and over here you would have an n equal to 1 this is located n equal to 1 so which means that my h of e of j omega this would equal to 1 upon 2 and 1 this would be 1 plus exponential of negative j omega and let me check isn't it like this it is it is now what can I do is if I need to convert it into some basic form that is the sine or a cos form so what do I need to do let's say I take uh, half of this common negative j omega by 2 so if I have it like this exponential of negative j omega by 2 and then you have this divided by 2 is as it is and over here you would have what you would have an exponential of negative j omega by 2 right plus exponential of negative j omega by 2 this would also become isn't it like this now exponential of j uh, theta or uh, wait 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 
yes so this would be plus exponential j yes yes so so have a look when you multiply it inside you will get a 1 now what do you have exponential of plus j theta plus exponential of minus j theta divided by 2 uh, is what is a cause of omega by 2 cause of theta right so yes yes that's fine that is my final answer yes so my final answer is what h of e of j omega this is equal to this 2 gets inside this is cos of omega by 2 you have an exponential of negative j omega by 2 into cos of omega by 2 this is what is my frequency response and now the book has also book would also have drawn the phase of it but we are rather interested in the magnitude of it so the magnitude of this exponential term would be 1 and the magnitude of uh, this is the magnitude of the frequency response is what its cause of omega by 2 so now if I draw the graph of it so we would understand the the what we would understand the behavior of it so where should I draw the graph so let's say I draw it over here let's say I draw it over here and this is it omega axis this is the magnitude of e of j omega axis how is the magnitude it like this it's like this this is pi this is minus of a pi right similarly if this is zero so this would repeat at where this would repeat at a 2 pi this point would be a 2 pi fine this is the omega axis similarly this would repeat over here this point would be a negative of a 2 pi so have a look have a look this is passing frequencies that are equal that are near to 0 or they are equal to even multiples of pi they're blocking the frequencies, attenuating the frequencies that are nearer to equal to pi or the even odd multiples of pi. If you have a 2 pi over here, this would be a 3 pi, right? So have a look at odd multiples, they're complete at pi, 3 pi, negative 3 pi, negative 5, but they are completely blocking it, they're making it a 0, which means what? This is a low pass filter. This is a low pass filter. And that was what our answer to the question is. That is what was required. Okay. The next that they have written is about the recursive and non-recursive systems. So let me remove the board first and I say I remove all of it. okay now what is a recursive system what is a non-recursive system so you know that the output depends on present input so that is non-recursive you know what that if the output is equal to is equal to means if this depends on the present input only this implies that this is a non-recursive system Whereas, whereas if you have that the output depends on the present input plus some previous values of output, so this is a system that is known as a recursive system. Isn't it like this? It is. If I have an example, if I have an example y of n minus a times y of n minus 1 is equal to x of n we are asked to find the type of the filter and of course if this is an LTI system so we would simplify it for self that is something else but is it a recursive system is it a non recursive system if you have a look so this depends on a y of n minus 1 which means some previous values of the output 
So this is a recursive system first of all. This is a recursive system first of all. Isn't it like this? It is. Now, now what do you have? We know that this is an LTI system. Why? Because this is a linear constant coefficient difference equation. So they define an LTI system. How do we know that this is a linear equation? Yes, first order. Yes, constant coefficient. We have constant coefficients. Difference, a difference is involved. So that's why. So if I consider my input to be the complex exponential, so the output would be the frequency response multiplied by my signal again. Right? So this system would imply if I put it in this, so y of n is h of e of j omega into e of j omega n minus a times y of n minus 1. So you know from the time shifting property, although we see properties in the next video, but this would be an a times h of e of j omega into y of, uh, uh, and isn't it like this? No, e of j omega into n minus 1, e of j omega into n minus 1, and then you would have x of n e of j omega n. Now if I tell you to split it yourself, j omega n then a minus 1 then you uh, cut all the exponential of j omega n terms then you have uh, this thing in common h of j omega right you have a 1 over there you have a 1 minus a exponential of negative j omega yes 1 minus a exponential of negative j omega what did we like this can you not do it yourself you can right if I give it one other step if I give it one other step h of e of j omega exponential of j omega n minus a times a, a, a e of j omega into exponential of j omega n into exponential of negative j omega right and this is equal to exponential of j omega n so this is what I was talking about j omega n would, uh, would cancel out fine h of j omega is <coughs> is a constant in between the two h of e of j omega and what remains 1 minus a times exponential of negative j omega so i shift it to the other side 1 upon 1 minus a times exponential of negative j omega this is the frequency response now have a look the frequency response depends on the value of the constant k it depends on the value of the constant a so you consider a proper value of a and then you draw this graph of h over j omega with respect to omega and i suggest a graphical tool matlab so you draw it in that and you would have a perfect result you know i draw it over here on the board that is not that sort of a perfect fine so anyways if you consider, if you consider uh, the value of A to be, let's say, a positive 0.6 as the book has done, if A is equal to plus 0.6, so where is it? <coughs> where is it? Over here. So the magnitude of E of j omega is something like this and would repeat of course and you know that very well you'll draw it in the MATLAB you'll understand it better this frequency is pi this is negative pi it's attenuating the frequencies that are near to pi they are passing the frequencies that are near to zero this is a low pass factor you know it right yes now if you have a if a is a negative 0.6 this is what the book has drawn okay so now the magnitude of h of g omega would be something like this
where this frequency is where this frequency is equal to a negative pi this frequency is equal to a pi it's passing the frequencies that are near to pi or multiples of pi similar to the negative side it's attenuating the frequencies that are near to zero they're nearer to to pi what does it suggest it's a high pass filter so depending on the value of the constant a the type of the filter changes accordingly and i suggest to please draw it in the matlab you will have a better understanding you will have a better understanding if i consider now a discrete time a discrete time non recursive filter if i consider uh, and maybe this is the last example for today before the video gets boring and longer y of n is equal to summation k running from a negative n to m b k x of n minus k b k x of n minus k Have a look. Uh, is this a recursive system? Is this a non-recursive system? Do we have any difference of the y of n terms? No. We're only depending on the inputs, whether the present, whether the past. So this is a non-recursive system. This is a non-recursive system. Why? Because only x of n we have x of n minus 1 minus 2 it could be any other things the b of k terms are the weights they are the weights or they are the 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 what the constant coefficients isn't it like this and now what sort of a filter is this what sort of a filter is this so this sort of a filter we call a moving average filter this sort of a filter we call moving average filter moving average filter I will explain it to you if we consider a three-point moving average filter if we consider a three-point moving average filter so what would it do it would take a single point the present one and the next one and the previous one and it would take the average of that how is that so my y of n would be what i'm taking three points it would be one upon three let's say my present point is x of n so the previous would be x of n minus one and the next would be x of n plus 1 so this would take the sum of the 3 and it would give you the 1 right the average if you have a point at 0 at 1 similarly at negative 1 2 negative 2 if this is my x of n this is my y of n if my current input is zero if i need to calculate y of zero so zero is my present point one is my previous point negative one is my previous point and one is my present my next point so at zero i would have the average of these three if one is my present point I need to calculate at 1. So 1 would be my present point, 2 would be my next point, 0 would be my previous point. So the average of these three would give me the value at 1. And similarly you can do at any points. Let's say at a negative 2 or let's say at a negative 1 I do it. So at a negative 1 if this is my present point, 0 is my next point, negative 2 is my past point. So the average of these three would give me this. This is what the concept of the moving average filter is is that okay yes it is 
if you consider the impulse response of it, the impulse response, the three point, right? So the impulse response H of n would be what? 1 over 3 delta of n minus 1 plus delta of n plus delta of n plus 1. And isn't it like this? So it is. Now the corresponding uh, frequency response H of E of J omega. 1 over 3 is constant. Delta of n minus 1 multiplied with, wait, let me write that formula. So the H of e of J omega is equal to summation n running from negative infinity to positive H of n exponential of negative J omega n. So you put this over here, exponential of negative j omega n at n equal to negative 1. So you would have what? Exponential of at 1. So exponential of negative j omega. Right? Then it would be 1. And then plus exponential of negative j omega. So this was at n equal to negative 1 now. So you would have a plus 1. And isn't it like this? Negative j omega plus 1 plus positive j omega yes it is so this is 1 plus 2 times cos of omega 1 plus 2 times cos of omega 1 over 3 1 plus 2 times cos of omega and you know this very well plus j omega plus minus exponential of minus j omega divided by 2 is the cos of omega now if I draw the magnitude of this if I draw the magnitude of this so what what would it be if this is the magnitude axis omega h of u j omega this this is the response of it This is the frequency 0, this is a frequency pi I believe or pi by 2, the, so the maximum is at a pi, pi, this is a 2 pi, this is a 3 pi, so negative pi, negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi. Have a look, it's pausing the frequencies that are nearer to 0. It's attenuating the frequencies that are nearer to pi. It's passing the frequencies that are nearer to even multiples of pi. It's attenuating the frequencies that are nearer to all multiples of pi. And similarly at the negative side. So what sort of a filter is this moving average filter? This is a low pass filter. This is a low pass filter and that is it. That is it. Now the book has some other points that if you take instead of uh, Three points take n plus m plus one points moving average and this and that and the response will get slower and faster and I cannot read them. No. Cannot read them. And also the book has uh, you know uh, commented on the step response and the impulse response of it. So if you get one faster the other one would slow down and you have a trade off. So you can study that yourself which one gets faster which one improves which one degrades. You can read that out from the book yourself for me that was enough for today that this is a low pass filter i get a little tired in the ramazan i don't have that sort of a stamina and i want to record one video one more video as well so anyways that's it for this video see you in the next video very soon inshallah till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in pairs and subscribe to the channel goodbye